Hello, welcome back. Today, I want to talk about Capture One for iPad. It's a new piece of software that Capture One have just released, and I think it's the solution I've been looking for. And as you know from um, previous videos, I've looked at uh, Pixelmator Photo in combination with Photos, Apple Photos. Uh, it worked very well. Um, then there was Apple Raw, very impressed with Apple Raw. But uh, this has surprised me. When I got the email to announce that uh, Capture One had released the iPad version, I thought, oh, I've got to look at this. I had a good look at Capture One uh, for the desktop. I liked it, um, put off a little bit by the price and a few other things, and kept going back to Lumina. But I've been on this um, quest to try and find, <laughs> there's no such thing as perfection, but I've been trying to find a, um, uh, a company that could offer me most of what I wanted, both for at home or in the office, um, processing of raw pictures and also out and about on the iPad. And Capture One, I think, have finally solved it for me. So let's fire it up and see what happens. So here we go. When you open Capture One, this is what you're presented with. You can import photos from, um, from Apple Photos. You can import files. You can import them from um, somewhere else on, the, on your uh, iPad or from um, you know, Dropbox or whatever. Um, also from files uh, from on, on a hard drive or a memory stick or whatever. In this instance, I'm going to show you how the photos uh, are brought in directly from your camera. Tethering. Another thing which I really like. So we'll just take the card out of the camera and we'll plug it into the card reader, plug it in and as you will see, it takes a second, it's uh, recognised the fact that I've put a camera card in, I push browse and I'm now looking at what's on the card. One of the things that, um, nice things that they've done uh, is that they if, like in my case here, I've been shooting both JPEGs and RAW on the card, I can instantly tell which are the RAW pictures and which aren't. Because up on the top right-hand corner of each picture, there's a little um, grayed-out box with the, the letter RAW in it. So I can now select the RAW pictures. You tick a little, um, little circle with a blue tick down in the bottom right-hand corners. So that's RAW, that's RAW. That's raw, that's raw, that's raw, that's raw, that's raw, that's raw, uh, that's raw, and raw, raw, and raw. Now, they've done that, you push the import blue button, and very quickly there's a little circle with a, a blue line that goes around and tells me the process, and as you can see, these pictures have come in. The lens on the um, uh, EOS R that I use is the 24 to 240 lens, and unfortunately, a lot of software do not recognise that lens, and which means that I have to go in manually and alter the, the lens. They can have quite a distortion. One of the reasons why I'm shooting JPEGs as well as RAW because uh, some of the pictures I want to take straight away, and the camera does the lens correction in inside. What I've noticed, as soon as they were loading up, I, I saw each one of those images being corrected. I mean, that's, I'm, that's pretty impressive. Right. So now, um, after you've done that, you can actually disconnect your card, and it, it looks like any other standard, you know, piece of software. Uh, we have the other side here, uh, the latest input images, trash, uh, import either from photos or files, and you can set up albums. So let's go in and have a look. Oh, and across the top, 
um, you have up, up here which you can actually close or open the, that side um, bar there. Uh, you, have, uh, you have your edit button which can say done or not. Uh, you have a uh, filter which we'll come back to. Um, I haven't had a good look at this. So here, file name, ratings, color tag, fair enough. Leave that for the moment. Gives you the information about the date and time. And over here, select. You can either select all, right? And this really comes into play after you've done the processing. So we'll cancel that. So let's go in and edit this. So we're in the edit screen now. And at the top, you've got your back button, you've got your filter, and you've got the, I don't know, what you call um, preferences pane. Not sure about that. Still learning about it. Two things. Um, you have a histogram. You can... Uh, hang on, I've got to remember how to do that. Um, that's it. See? I've only operated this once. So, two-finger tap, and you can get rid of the histogram, and two-finger tap, and the histogram comes back. So over here, we have one, two, three, four, five uh, controls. The first one gives you the ability to um, sort out by marking them either stars here or colors here. Um, and you can, give, you can rate by stars or you can use colors. I prefer colors, but uh, you can go through and give a color to each particular image that you want. Um, I like that. You've also got the film strip down the below, uh, down here, and you can turn that on and off. You can also have full screen so with a number of different taps. So there's plenty of flexibility there. Okay, let's go down to the next control panel and it's about styles and presets. Now I'm not going to get into that at the moment. Um, you can set up custom styles, which I'll show you how to do that later, it's pretty easy. Um, I'm not too sure what IQ styles are, but apparently it relates to the desktop version of um, Capture One and um, Legacy uh, Spring, I'm not sure. These are all, these relate to um, the settings that are on, on the desktop version. I don't want to cover that for the moment. So we'll go to the next control panel. This is where you can uh, rotate, straighten, crop, all that type of thing. Again, all pretty straightforward. I'll leave it be. Uh, this is where I believe the power of this software is. So these two buttons here you have here, you've got um, your black and white, white balance, exposure, HDR, which is not, it's a bit misleading, it's more about uh, where you can control your shadows, um, your highlights, your whites and your blacks. So it is H HDR, but it's not what you might consider HDR. And then the next one, uh, next control, you have uh, noise control, so you've got sharpening, noise, uh, grain, and moire, or moire, however you pronounce that. So let's go back to the top one here. So let's say, for instance, in this instance, I feel, so this is your exposure, right? Now, in this instance, what I want to do, I want to bring up the, I want to alter the, uh, the exposure a bit. So over here, and this is the genius of it, you don't have to use the pencil or anything, and you don't have to push sliders. You can just slide that, and as you can see, the, it, the image is getting brighter or um, less exposed, and the histogram um, moves accordingly. But this is the other part I like about it. If I push and hold this button here, I can actually go up and down and slide and control that. And that applies to every single button that's on this. I mean, that's incredible. So now the other thing, let's say we go down to HDR and I want to do shadows. Here we go. So um, I can 
the shadow, that's yeah, better. And now it might give it a bit of clarity. We'll go to clarity, and there we go. And if we go back to exposure, go to contrast, and I might use this button now, and as you can see, that picture is almost the way I want it, but we'll go to clarity, uh, sorry, we will go to, um, go down to uh, sharpening, and I might just add a bit of sharpening to that. That's better. That image is basically the way I like it. So we can go along now and do the next image. Here we go. And seeing them on sharpening, I might just go ahead and do that, and we'll do it this way. Yeah, that's looking a bit better. But I might give it also a little bit of structure. So we'll come back up here. Get a structure. And, yeah, that's looking better. But I also think we need to, let's have a look, exposure. And then we need to the control. Oh, that's better. Here we go. There we go. Look at that. So this is in the eye of the beholder. I like that. that that's, that's good. So I think we'll leave that one there. Now, this is the other thing I, I wanted to show you. So this, you know, these images, uh, as you can see, a portrait. But if you get a landscape picture, now if I pick this up and I turn it on its side, I can control all these. As you can see, let's go to exposure. Actually, let's go to white balance because um, I want to reduce. There we go. Look at that. So, in essence, they've they've thought about everything, and we might give this a little bit of uh, ooh, what are we going to sharpening? I think we need to sharpen up a bit, and probably even a little bit of. Uh, Hmm, not sure. No, I think I'll leave it at that. So we'll leave that picture. We'll turn that around and put that back there. <laughs> Might go to this picture. Uh, I think we need to do a bit of white balancing. No, we don't. No, exposure. Oh, you know, sometime now. Hit, hit the exposure. Yep. And... Just a little bit, probably even shadows actually. So we go to HDR, go to shadow, and yeah, although probably uh, let's go to contrast, that's better. And then we'll go down to, to sharpening, and I might just that's better. And I'm happy with that shot. So, if we go back, we can say that we've selected that one. So let's just say, um, actually, let's go back in. Sorry, go back into the, go here. And I like that. I'm going to give that a green. I like that shot. I'm going to give that a green. Uh, and we'll do that shot there. And we'll do that. That's a green. Oop, that's a green as well. Right? So, we go back. As you can see, if we go here and we now have all three pictures that are like, we can now select them, select all, we can go share. Now on the share button you have, you can change the name if you want, put a custom name, I'll leave it at that. Format, JPEG, now EIP RAW, this is apparently um, a file which uh, encapsulates, encapsulates your raw image with your adjustments and that means that you can save that as a file, pass it on to someone else, and they can bring it into Capture One and continue on where you've set, where you've finished, you know, working on it. Um, your uh, quality set up for, for um, JPEGs, I'll always leave it at high. And uh, the other thing I like about it though, so in, in my case, I always prefer to save JPEGs as a full resolution at the highest quality so that I can use other software to, to um, you know, reduce them for web content and so forth. So I can do that, but I can also then, if I wanted to, create web versions of them or even Instagram optimized. So <laughs> I like that. Um, so you go put export, little 
circle up the top telling me the process. It's very quick, being on the M1 iPad. Right, now you've got the option. You can either email, put in Dropbox, print them if you want to. In my case, I'm going to save the files. And I've, got a, I've already got a pre-arranged um, directory on my iPad called Process pre, uh, Picks, and we'll just go Save. And there you go, they're saved. So, all images. The other thing about this is you can go in and create a new album. I'm going to call it Home, Create. So let's say we select that one. And that one and that one. Add to, down here on the blue strip, you've got next to the share and the delete, you've got this add to. Albums, home, and I go add. Okay, home is now showing me three pictures. Now this is where the power comes in, in respect to working with the desktop. And now I don't have the desktop version at the moment, so I can't show you the full process. But if you push these little three buttons here, add to cloud, those pictures, raw pictures with all of the settings uh, that you have uh, altered, adjustments, will be added to your cloud account, which comes totally with this Owning this, you get up to 1,000 pictures. So I can add that now and it would add to my cloud. I'm not going to worry about it. When you open up Capture One on your desktop, you will, um, there is a, uh, if it's not on the, the top screen, you can go into tools and, and add it to it, but there will be on your control bar a, a cloud download button. You hit that and it'll give you a choice of albums that, uh, are linked up to this, depending on whatever albums you've created here, you select the album you want and hey presto, those pictures, depending on your internet speed, will be transferred to uh, your uh, desktop uh, application and you can then continue on your merry way from exactly where you left off on the iPad. Now, to me, so far, I haven't been able to fault this. I've only found three things which I think would improve it. In the, the filter section, I would like to have a section where, like sometimes, bef long before I think about, especially I've got a small group of pictures like this, I will just go in and start editing and I'll choose the relevant pictures that I want and I'll edit them. I would like the ability to go in and say, edited pictures, click and then they could filter out just them, so I could select them and put them in the album or export them or do whatever I want to do. So that's one thing I'd like to see added. The other two things that I'd like to see, um, when you are editing, in the process of editing, so here we go, and you're finished editing, like say for instance the, the bin there, finished editing, I would like it, so back on this screen, there's a little thing that tells me, like an indication, so where you've got the raw, maybe down here on the right hand side or top left hand, is something that tells me it's been edited. Um, that would be helpful. Uh, and the other thing, oh, that's it. So when you are editing something, let's say for instance, uh, we'll cho choose that one. And as you know, I've done some edits on that. So if I, the, down here, there are these little icons too. If I go click, that is now copied my adjustments. Right, so this thing comes up and you can actually modify. This is interesting. I hadn't, didn't realize you could do this, but you can modify the adjustments, but we'll leave that for the moment. We go adjustments copied. Right. And now if I go to say this picture, the one below it, you push it and it, it literally copies the adjustments over. That's fantastic. But what I would like to, to do is have that so that, um, you could do it over multiple pictures. Actually, I just thought about that. I wonder. I wonder if there's a way. I'm not sure. This is... Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, they, I, they, they may have this in here, but I haven't worked it out. But that, that's something which I, I'd like to see made easier. So if I'm back here, I'd like to see some sort of button where I can then say select all, or select, multiple select, go bang, bang, bang. And then 
maybe down here, put that and go bang and add the adjustments. That would help. Um, oh, now I did mention before I finish up, uh, there was, uh, I mentioned something about, so let's, let's, no, no, let's, let's, um, oh, that'll do. Let's go here. All right. Uh, I said that you can make your own presets. So say for instance, um, uh, actually, no, like, wait a minute. Let's go back to the, uh, this one here. So I've done a series of pre, uh, adjustments. And I'll, I, let's say I take pictures of flowers like this regularly. I can push this little button here, create a preset, create, and give it the name. And uh, I can choose which settings, save it, and that'll be saved. All right, and I'm going to cancel that because I don't want to do that. So I can save that for myself by simply doing that. I'm going to wrap up here because I'm conscious of how long this video is taking. Uh, this piece of software is brilliant. I mean that. And this is this is first generation. This is their first iteration of this software. And they've indicated there are going to be more improvements. They're going to have masking and so forth. <laughs> if, to me, if they made the three improvements that I mentioned before, it'd be perfect. So, and I'm actually seriously considering now purchasing Capture One for the, for the, uh, the desktop and making this whole combo my, you know, standard system. Uh, so to me, I give it a really big thumbs up and um, it's well worth the $7.49 a month. What, that's two coffees? Well worth it. Uh, go try it. Have a look at it. Let us know what you think. And uh, until next time, we'll see you later. Thank you. <laughs>